How thin are you right now? I don't know. I haven't jumped on the scale in a while. You haven't? You've been playing b-ball or something like that? You're trying for a second career? <laughs> <laughs> Just running behind the kids, man. The real reason I want to talk to you, actually, is because uh, I want to tell you you're going to be in the Hall of Honor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. I'm honored. I, I can't wait to go tell everybody. And I can't say that I expected it right now. I, I am a little bit surprised. I'm looking here. Seven, eight, nine Pro Bowls. You sure as heck deserve it. Julius Pepper finished his 17-year career with 724 tackles, including 159 and a half sacks. Still fourth best mark in NFL history. Julius Peppers is going to score a touchdown. His 266 games played are a record for a defensive lineman, and his 13 block kicks are second most ever in the NFL. Please welcome Julius Peppers. Thank you. When I think about my sports career in this state, it's not so much that I think about what I did, it's about the people that were around me who guided me, inspired me, and who supported me. I also think about the certain moments that made my destiny. The guy standing in front of him standing straight up, by the way, he's, he's not ducking down. I was 15 years old, right? The football coach standing right there next to the bus. His name was Ray Davis. <laughs> He was like, you ever thought about coming out for the team? I was like, nah, not really, you know. I, I, I play basketball, man. Um, Even then, he was a man amongst men. This was a six foot four, 240 pound kid. And I said, you know, I think it'd be in your best interest if you decide to play football. I asked him, like, look, what, what you gonna have me playing if I come out to try out for the team? I told him that he could play whichever position he wanted to play. Jokingly, I was like, well, all right, well, I want to be the running back. And I said, well, that, that's great, and you will. At that time, football is like, you know, catching the ball, throwing the ball, scoring touchdowns, right? That's what I wanted to do. play pretty good. I've not seen many athletes in my lifetime to compare to Julius's athletic ability. Number 21, he's retired, and we gave him number 21 because that's his shoe size. The biggest shoes we could find was a size 19. It didn't slow him down. He ran just as fast with his toes curled. You know, I rushed for a lot of yards, scored a lot of touchdowns, ended up at UNC. Obviously homegrown, so you kept hearing this, this guy, this athlete that played basketball at, at Chapel Hill, right? From rebounds to dunks, I mean, the power. He was so gifted, and he was just tipping the iceberg. You're looking at a kid that didn't have spring football practice because he was playing NCAA basketball. I went down to Chapel Hill and worked him out. And when we came back from that workout, we were like, please, please don't take Julius number one. Carolina Panthers select Julius Peppers, defensive end from North Carolina. We scouted him really hard. We watched every single game of his career. We watched his basketball uh, film as well. And, uh, you know, we just had a great feeling about, you know, what he was going to bring and how much he would grow. And some people, uh, questioned whether he was deserving of the second pick in the draft, but uh, I think he proved otherwise. If I had to sum up Julius Peppers in one word, gosh, this is such a bad word, but it's the truth. Freak. He's not just an athlete, he's a freak athlete, and he's probably the best athlete I've ever been around. The speed, the quickness, I mean, at his size was just yeah, there's no other word. Just he was—he was a freak athlete. We really we ran out of adjectives. We ran out of superlatives. We just did because every time he stepped on the field, it was something new. It was something we hadn't seen before. He was built to go chase quarterbacks. That was who he was. You have a quarterback on the field. You want to make sure Julius Peppers is another time zone. And Peppers got to him. 285 pounds of pure rip muscle and connective tissue. He was God's gift to the game of football. He's a machine. I mean, he was just a freak in everything that he did. His length, speed, size, and his strength forever will be unmatched. Julius is a guy that could take over a game. Yeah. It's picked off! It's 
There's just so many phenomenal plays that he's made. Let me tell you something. You either gonna give me my respect or I'm gonna take it. So how you, how you want it? How you want it? How you want it? Just pure baller. One set. Peppers oh. got him again. That was a direct hit. Hey, Ben, he will be on the outside. Hey, it's off me, man. Rodgers is set. Julius Peppers. My first impression, I was like, man, if guys could not get bigger and faster, it just did. It just happened. Here comes this giant of a man, and I immediately know who it is. I remember it vividly. You picture Andre the Giant walking into the room, you know? And it's just like, this guy, not only was he, was he wide and big, but he was tall. So I nervously got up and introduced myself, and I think I mumbled through. He's like, ah, nice to meet you, nice and cool. You know, he kept on going. And I just thought, oh my God, I have to block that. <laughs> the toughest part of, you know, being Julius's teammate was every year on pitcher day is because I had to stand next to him. It was like, <laughs> I always stood on, on my tippy toes and yet I was still extremely small compared to him. Um, and I'm not lying, every single year I had to stand next to him and it was a reminder, his ability to really play any position if he, if he wanted to. Um, but he chose defensive end. I had good size for a football player, right? But the guys that across from me were just as big. You know, it wasn't one of those things where it was just easy. You had to put work in. So um, I took pride in putting the work in, in season, off season, all the way around. People talk about this rookie transition. And I mean, he gave welcome to the NFL moments to other people. I'm not even aware if he ever really had one. He just seemed like he, his transition was so seamless. I mean, coming into Detroit as a young kid and getting three sacks as a rookie in that game. And Cooper's got him again, and there's a fumble. When we needed a play, he would come through for us. Two years before he got there, we was 1-15. We didn't even know we were going to have a job. <laughs> getting him, I think, was a real big part of, you know, that defense taking that next step. We are watching the blossoming of a superstar in the National Football League. He made other teams game plan for him. Your offensive planning had to begin with Julius Peppers. You know, when you're the defensive rookie of the year, that's something that the entire league takes note of. He was getting double team, triple team, chipped on. Rucker reaped the benefits because now he gets single and he was an unbelievable pass rusher in his own right. We weren't going to try to be fancy. We were just going to try to whoop you and play hard. We stepped on the field and we wanted to be bullies. You know what I mean? We wanted to beat everybody because we had the Tampa Bay Bucks in our division at the time and they were the bullies. The 12 9 rock fight. And I think Pep had a blocked field goal. You know, a basketball player at North Carolina, that was just a solid rejection right in the middle. It was a brutal game to watch. It was nasty. It was rough. That was a fun game. We just blocked three field goals. And that was one of those games that kind of like pinpoint who we were going to be that year. That was their whole goal. They wanted to change the image of the Panthers' defense. They would eat steel and spit rivets. It was a pretty tough football team. And we created our own little domination on defense and it started up front. And we had 50 sacks from our defensive front that year. We didn't really blitz a whole lot. They took a lot of pride. They used to call them the Carolina Six Pack. Up here, Al Wallace, Brenston Bucker, Chris Jenkins, Shane Burton and Julius Peppers, I mean, that's a Carolina six-pack right there. Those six guys right there, they're the ones that set the tone for what this defense was going to be about. I'm always very proud of that. That's one of the things that I'm more proud of, being a part of the teams that actually solidified the identity of this organization. The level of performance on every defense he was a part of rose because everybody wanted to be at the standard of Julius Peppers. You know, as a defender, you know, we're all competitive guys. You know, we want to be at that level. So when you have somebody like that on the field like Julius, it's just going to raise everybody's level around him. The talent, I was an older guy playing next to him and he made me better. He prolonged my career, you know, for the next three years just playing next to him because I didn't have to do as much work. Hit that boy and let him know. Win the game right hook, man. Win the game right hook. First live drill I'd gotten to do against him. Caught me, lifted me off my feet, planted me flat on my back. The first thing I thought was, oh my God, if this is how it is, I'm a bust. 
where he's going against the best defensive end in all of football every day. Uh, Jordan Gross had a great career and obviously was made better by Julius Peppers and vice versa. So it was iron sharpening the iron and it was, it was great battles. The one thing that I think that makes him so special is because he has all these gifts that everybody can see. <laughs> to me, it was his leadership. Now, it was a quiet leadership, but it was a leadership that we needed. His work ethic, everybody just followed him. Coming backside, eats him up at the 45. Allows his actions to speak. Yeah, baby! I'm going to show and lead by my play. Sometimes guys don't have to be real vocal and speak all the time uh, to have leadership, and uh, he was definitely a leader. All day, man, every yep. play, you hear me? Yep. Don't look at the scoreboard, don't look at nothing. I got you. you go play lights up football. All right, mm -hmm. let's go, boy. Let's go. All right, yep. have a good one. Yep. Yep. My leadership style was more of example setting, watch what I'm doing, and see how to do it. Every game and every day in practice, it didn't surprise you that Pep was going to make a big play. Mid-air fumble in Atlanta in 2004. I was on the field shooting that game. Dick short drop. Oh. He fumbled the ball. Pepper has it in the air. I get a sack on Michael Vick, knock the ball out. Julius Peppers is running by the ball, just reaches out with one hand, grabs it, and don't break strides, he gets to the end zone. For the life of me, I couldn't find where the ball went. I just know that 90 was going away from me in my camera. Julius Peppers is going to score a touchdown! There wasn't anything he couldn't do on the field. I've seen Julius take over a game. Playing Tampa, and it's here. And they throw a screen pass to Michael Pittman. He rushed the quarterback, they throw a screen. Dump off screen to Pittman, he's to the 15, he's to the 20. And Julius runs him down from behind and tackles him. He chased Michael Pittman down when Pittman had a 40-yard head start. Tampa just shook their head like, this is not normal, this is not real. There's so many great plays. I can remember him playing in Arizona, a quick screen, he just plucked it out of the air. And picked off, Peppers, he will score! Right side! Wow, everything's going right for the Carolina Panthers. There's times where, you know, he, he, he grabs interceptions that, you know, it have been tough for DBs to, to grab. We're playing Denver in 04. I can remember on that play watching him because I was out of breath. Good leg again by Plummer in trouble, throws in the end zone. We drop it in the coverage on goal line. He intercepts the out route with one hand. It's picked off. Back up field, it's Peppers down the far sideline. I intercepted in the end zone, and now I'm looking at 100 yards. Rod Smith was chasing him, and he started zigzagging, trying to avoid him. He's to the 40, he's to the 50, keep going, baby, don't run out of gas. And the only reason that he didn't score a touchdown on that was 5,280 feet. 20, 10, 5, <laughs> down at the two-yard line. I remember thinking, well, I'll be damned, he is human. <laughs> he, he ran out of gas. Let's back it up to the play before that. They had a running quarterback, Jake Plummer, and they ran a naked boot. There's the toss, he rolls to his right. I was the only person that saw it. I had to turn around and beeline to try to stop him from scoring. Right, thinking about the corner. Plummer doesn't get there, and there's Peppers. Julius dove and hit him about the one or two yard line. That was the play that preceded that next play. Man, it's 290 pounds. You know, you got DBs that can't break on the route. And he's pulling away from everybody. If he don't stumble on the grass, that's a touchdown. Julius Peppers may not catch his breath after those last two plays until he gets back to Carolina. It was just Julius. He did things that people just laughed because it was no one else could do what Julius could do. <laughs> the football part of it is all well documented. It's how much it meant to him, how much he cared and what a great person he was. I mean, I understand he's coaching flag football for youth down in Florida. And that's just kind of the person he is. Come on, y'all. Come on, guys. Get head around, Mark. We got to go, man. The game about to start. It's great to be out here. I wouldn't trade it for the world, you know? Go, Andy. Let's go, good. My cherish these moments, and um, I'm having fun. It's fun for me as well. They're having fun out here, I'm having fun too. We could talk about the plays on the field, but we don't have enough time to talk about these guys and the personalities of what they do off the field. Like, I can tell you right now, the stuff that people don't know about Pep is what he does in the community. I, I don't get emotional, but this is overwhelming. Somebody's actually here to help me. We all need help sometimes, man. Yeah. 
appreciate what you do in helping others. And that's something that is remarkable, especially in today's age. Like, he has impacted community, and he doesn't put it on a billboard. You guys playing great, all right? Just keep pulling flags. Just keep doing what you're doing out there, all right? One, two, three, yes! Let's go! Let's go, let's go. Oh, oh, go, go, go! go. Uh, we want to win. We definitely want to win because it ain't no fun when you're losing, but it's more important the lessons, the life lessons that we teach them through the game. You had a couple okay, runs today. You caught, up, you caught a couple passes, you ran good, you got some yards, you're getting better, man. He's a very compassionate, caring, deeply intellectual guy that we've been lucky to be around. I don't think he took really that much pleasure in inflicting such trauma and pain. You all right, Alex? Come on, baby. But I think Come he on, would have been very happy to help him up, dust him off, ask him if they're all right, and then crush their dreams and hopes on the very next play. <laughs> when he came back for a second tour of duty, it seemed like he was there to just enjoy, to support, to help coach the young guys. Y'all make y'all inside move, man. Just rush, cut it loose. There we go, there we go, there we go. The sooner you get engaged with him and get off of him, the faster you're gonna have a chance to make a play. He's one of those guys that he doesn't say a whole lot, but when he talks, you listen to him. Don't be offside. Yeah, don't be offside. You gotta take that inside move, because that's his escape route, up and to the right. You gotta keep pounding him. Keep pounding them. Come on, come on, come on. Talk, man, talk. Talk it out. But those last years, it was a gift to be able to give back, to see other guys grow and excel. Hey, get it next time. Don't worry about that. Shake it off. Shit, one. <laughs> As a fan of this game and a, a fan of the Carolina Panthers, it was great to see him come back home. <laughs> hey, you know this song, son? <laughs> <laughs> so good! So good! So good! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. I took pride in the full circle moments. Being able to play here as a young guy, going into my veteran years and leaving, but also coming back. I'm happy to have come back and played my last down as a Carolina Panther. As far as my career here, I think about all of the, the great memories that we have. Congrats, baby. Congrats. Yeah. The things that we did off the field, the time spent, the memories shared. It was a great ride. It was a great experience. First, I think of all of my teammates, all of the great guys that I, that I played with and that I learned from. And I think about just blue collar, the hardworking, hard-nosed football team. We are watching the blossoming of a superstar in the National Football League. He was a great teammate. For a guy who was a star, you wouldn't know it by being around him. He came in here, highly touted North Carolina kid. That was a lot of pressure on him, and he handled it so well. It, you know, it was a little bit of a, a, a challenge, I, I say, because of the expectations, the pressure. But once I got here, I had the most fun that anybody could have. with the football, that's Julius Peppers. He was God's gift to the game of football. You know, just the things he was able to do was just almost superhuman-like. Peppers has it in the air, back down the sideline. No one's gonna touch him. Julius Peppers is gonna score a touchdown. Of exceptional quickness, exceptional perception. Big, strong, fast. He had everything you're looking for. And as good as he was on the football field, he's 10 times better than man off the field. I think that Julius just embodies what it is to be a Carolina Panther. Great dad, great husband, and on the field, he, he gave it his all. Never coached anybody like him. And he was just a generational talent. It's an honor to be part of this group, honestly, and to be able to, you know, in the future when I come back to games, you know, with my kids, they'll be able to come and look up and see our name up in the bathroom.